So pretty much on every single video, you guys have said get the node controller mod and okay, I'm getting it. I've got it. And I'm no expert on this mod. I downloaded it probably like an hour ago and I haven't really worked out how to do much in the last hour, but I figured since I didn't really know about this mod and I'm a pretty hardcore gamer in City Skyline, I assume there's a lot of other people who don't know about this mod or know about it and don't know what it does. Um, I had no idea what it does, so let's go through some of the things that it can do and um, also if there are different uh, things that it can do that I forgot to mention please let us know down below and of course there will be a lot that I have no idea about at the moment but let's go through some of the things that I have found out the interesting thing is that when I first downloaded the mod um, it also recommended to download this one right here which is the electrics mod and it allows you to change the nodes around as well which I think is going to be quite useful because I do have a lot of issues with nodes pretty much throughout this whole map but um, let's have a look at some of the functions on the node controller so on my computer it's control N I know on other people's computer you can click on the road and it comes up down here but for me it does not so we can go back and go control N and it brings up that little thing right there and like I don't even know <laughs> So you click on a node, like this is this is my understanding. You click on a node and you have all these different options for like slopes and doing uh, pedestrian crossings, making areas for U-turns. And let's just go through it and I'm partially kind of exploring myself. So don't go too hardcore on me down below in the comments because this is all new to me. So if I go middle, that one, I think it, it depends on the road as well. If I do bend, if I go stretch yeah see how you can like change the angles on it so if we'll set that back you can also change these slopes which I mean that could be useful in the future and then I'm pretty excited for this this part right here like you can stretch it right out and I know that looks funny but I feel like this is gonna be really useful in the future you can stretch it right out make it really thin as well like how thin can we make it before it looks funny like those cars can just fit in, but you can make it really, really thin, but then of course it's not going to work. And if you go too thin, it goes a bit buggy like that. So I think that's going to be something really cool. But the one thing that I noticed is like, if you go bigger like that, the the um, zoning on it, oh, that's not a very good example. If I go over here and I press control N, go like that, I suppose, and we, Nope, not gonna do it on that one. <laughs> Ooh. Okay, if we stretch it out like that, the only thing you have to be sure about is that the zoning is still going to be where the original road was. So if you're zoning along, you can you might have to just drag the building out itself. Like you might just have to put it like that manually because otherwise it's going to grow um, straight through your road and it's going to look a little bit funny. But I do like that that whole aspect. I think that is a pretty cool thing and um, yeah, that, that's useful. Now apparently you can also remove the pedestrian crossings. Now in the big harbour video that I did a few videos ago, you might remember this one right here and as I told you guys like oh, I don't know how to get rid of it it's really ugly so I'm gonna try and get rid of it so we click on it and let's just go through them so you have this option right here middle we don't need to change the the angles or anything because that's not necessary here um, slope is also not necessary stretch again could be fun to use in the future when we're doing like a really squishy small road um what's this bend doesn't really do much stretch i think kind of it gets rid of the pedestrian crossing but it still looks a little bit funny but i mean it could be what we need we don't want crossing u-turn but then if you have the u-turn how can how do you get rid of these right here that's what i want to know but then i think you have to go into custom no go into stretch and then we can stretch it out 
Oh, that's what I was looking for. So to make it look a little bit nicer, you can click on corner offset and it kind of stretches it out a bit um, to whatever you need. So I think if we go like that, maybe, I think that looks pretty good. It's not too different looking. And then of course you can always go into um, the line marking tool to do whatever else you need. And when I was looking at the tutorials, the guy really said, make sure that if you are doing things like this, you might have to go into doing something like this as well, just to make sure, because it can go a little bit funny or it might not connect properly. But I think that looks all right. It looks a little bit thick there. Maybe we can make that one a little bit thinner. So we go control N, click on the node, and then oh, it is, what's that, 105. If we go back down to 100. Well, you could even make it smaller, but we'll just go back to 100. So that's good. Okay, let's see what else we can do. I think there was something to do with the highway lanes. We could change the highway lanes, if I remember correctly. So if we click on this one, and I think all we have to do is just drag it out because the issue is how it connects between this one, which has three lanes and this one, which has what? one, two, three, four, four or five lanes. So you can see there's a bit of a weird difference, but apparently if you just drag it, oops, better select it first. If you drag it out, it kind of aligns it a little bit better. And then I think we'd have to come along with our um, marking tool to make it, yeah. Okay, so that's gonna be really useful. There was a really annoying one over here, which you guys really were like, oh, that's not good. This one right here. So if we just drag that out, Okay, that looks a bit better, right? And then you can just adjust, I guess, I guess you can just adjust these little bits right here to make it line up. And then again, of course, you might need to do all of the connections here, adjust the speed limit, do the line markings as well. And um, that's actually really good. Now I understand why you guys were like, get it, Sam, get it. It's really quite useful because that is good. There shouldn't be any difference between like this lane and where this lane is. It should be straight through. Whereas before it was kind of a bit of a wonky, weird ride to go through an intersection. So that is pretty good. Um, what else could we do? Back into control N. I close that back into control N. We can just, you can change the slopes. Well, sorry, the em embankment around if you need cars still drive along fine but I mean you won't really like really okay we won't need to go that extra oh, oh the car's like nope not even doing it so that one you probably won't really need very often but maybe that one maybe you need as well and then stretching to make it extra wide or extra thin yeah I like that I like it I like it being a little bit thinner I really do like that and then what else can we do? If we click on like this one, for example, you can just drag it out a bit. Okay, so that's pretty much it for that mod so far. Um, I assume there's still going to be like a lot of other things that you can do with that mod, but that is the basics that I've worked out so far. And then the other mod that was recommended to, to use with it is this one right here, which I mentioned earlier. So you have all these different tools here and we'll go through them. Um, this one, I believe it's when you connect two different roads together. So, and I feel like we don't really need this, but if you have this existing road here and then you have another road going across, you see how it doesn't connect. I'm pretty sure you click on this one and this one and that one and you press enter it makes a little node for you. So just to show it again, just straight across there. But I mean, who really does it like that? But you'd select, select, and then just press enter, and there it is. So maybe you need it, maybe you don't need it. This one here adds an extra node, like if we want a node here for whatever reason. So you can see we've got that one there. But we can also use it to remove the node, so we can click and remove it like that. Um, you can like go like that as well. And I think that's useful as well because throughout this one, there's a lot of random nodes, like for example, you can get rid of that one. It does flip it around the other way for some reason, but if you, when you delete the node, it actually makes it a bit flatter, which I think is quite good. Look at that. It makes it a bit flatter, but then, like I said, you just got to go in here, find your road, whichever one it is, and 
flip it around. But yeah, that one's really handy because you do have a lot of extra nodes sometimes and it's hard to manage them. They make weird angles. Anyway, this one here is for your slopes. So let's see what it says. Select nodes and hit enter to smooth their slopes. Hold control to select all nodes between two junctions. Press shift C to clear the selection. So if we find two nodes, come back over here. It said select two. So let's select like that one, that one, enter. I don't know, it kind of did something. What about if we try this one with that one and we press enter? No, actually maybe we can get rid of this node here. Yeah, that makes it a little bit smoother anyway. And then even like over here, if we get rid of that one. Yeah, it just makes it a bit smoother, I think. It looks better that way. But I wish it didn't flip it going the other way. I mean, come on. And then this one over here, I don't really understand this one. Select a segment to flip it horizontally. Flips anything triggered by the invert. So I was trying it before and I was like clicking. I was like, mm, it's not really going to do anything. So I don't know. If someone can let me know about what that one does, that would be great. I think the other thing that you can do, I forgot to mention, you can go like this and you can add in a, a crossing. Actually, it doesn't work on that road. Never mind. Like I said, it only works on some roads. Uh, if we go into like this one right here, let's say we can go like that. And then, what is it doing? Go custom there. There we go. And then we have a nice crossing with traffic lights. And then if we want, we can make it a bit fatter or skinnier. I think that looks pretty good. Another thing that you could do, I think was you can select the end points of a road as well so you can change like the sizes if you really want to for whatever reason i haven't really worked out like an, a reason to do that yet so it's just there if you need but yeah so you can change all those around stretch it around make it skinnier the slopes as per usual embarkments or not that's another one I like. You can make the intersection really big, which is which would actually be quite cool because then you can do all the line markings and yeah. See now that one's actually quite bigger as well, and I think that looks really cool, especially for like those bigger intersections where you're going to have a lot of traffic and where you have a lot of bigger buildings. I think doing big intersections like that looks pretty good in my opinion. And yes, so. That is it. If there's anything else, let me know down below. But I mean, I'm pretty satisfied with all of those. There's a pretty good amount to work with. Stretching it all out, making it skinnier, thicker, adjusting slopes, removing nodes, adding nodes, adjusting the terrain, uh, the slopes. It is pretty good. So definitely check it out if you haven't already. And um, you probably will be seeing me using it. So thank you to everyone who mentioned it so so much like pretty much every video someone mentioned to get those mods but anyway thank you guys and i'll catch you guys next time